There is a place high on a cliff in Europe. A place where horrible experiments are performed. Unnatural experiments. There is a place called Dark Gables! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Acme Theater's presentation of the improvised gothic horror, Dark Gables. You might be wondering what's going to happen tonight, but we don't even know who's going to survive. Last week in Dark Gables, Dr. Drakenstein rose his ex-wife, his late wife, from the dead, and also his brother-in-law came to visit. Tonight, the story unfolds, so sit forward in your chair. Make sure the person sitting next to you is the person you came with, and try to hold back the screams in tonight's terrifying episode of Dark Gables! <laughs> in the castle of Dr. Drakenstein. His wife, his beautiful living wife, Emily, is there with her brother, Francis. Dr. Drakenstein arrives from the laboratory, giddy from the success of his experiment, his horrible experiment. will continue over dinner. 
We now go into the bowels of the Drakenstein Castle, where the creature is all alone, all alone, all alone. Properly when you've just been brought back from the dead. We now go to the church of Father Morningstar. He's about to receive an unexpected visit from a strange gypsy lady known as Madame Vendona. Unable to sleep when he receives a visit from one Sylvia looking for her sister. Yes, I remember you from the other day at the tavern. 
screaming after we found that mutilated body. Yes, I remember you. Please come sit on my bed couch. <laughs> How may I help you? Oh my, um, my sister has been missing. Mm. I've come here from Connecticut to try to find her and all I've found is are secrets and and I think there's a serial killer loose or something that was... I must warn you, you must leave Dark Gables. No. You'll find nothing so tame as a serial killer here. <laughs> no, no, a serial killer would be like a hostess fruit pie compared to what we're about to go through. <laughs> yes. A sweet, sweet hostess fruit pie. <laughs> I know. not leave Dark Gables without my sister or an answer as to where she is. I see you've got spirit then, and I shall help you. Don't like to touch when I shake. <laughs> An alliance. As it were. We return to the monster deep in the laboratory. The constant ringing of the bell has brought Griselda down to see what is happening. are standing out on the balcony, perhaps drinking fancy drinks or smoking expensive cigars, or maybe neither of those things. Yes. 
I've come to find out if you've continued your research. Why, is Pfizer interested? <laughs> perhaps, or perhaps just myself. It's yourself? Why, I'm quite suspicious you were the one that got me fired. Well, I'm quite suspicious of you! <laughs> the email to our manager came from... Francie. 41 at hotmail.com. All right! All right! It was me. I had you fired. I couldn't stand seeing you with my lovely sister. What? You mean it wasn't about the experiment? Well, that as well. They were breathing down my throat. You have to understand. Humans share 95% of the DNA with corn. <laughs> with crossbreeding one with a gibbon. <laughs> a human hybrid, if you will? Well, a corn-gibbon hybrid. <laughs> I was just making a point. It's perfectly natural. Go on. Well, I explained how we share 95% of our DNA. <laughs> okay, I get it. It's corn! It's corn! <laughs> Emily is taking a stroll out in the garden when she comes upon Count Duché and Sylvia. and Dr. Drakenstein as Griselda tries to tell the doctor what she's seen. And you see, then the sir 
now has no choice but to divide. Mm. Explain. <laughs> On the cob would be difficult. Excuse me. I'm not sure. Oh, uh, May I have a word with you, please? Of course. Allow me to step away from the balcony. To the other balcony. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that we could mm. walk away from one balcony to the other. Yes. Listen, I just... Rent again for the basement. The basement? You mean my laboratory? And I know I wasn't supposed to, but I heard a bell over and over and over, and I went down to the basement, and I saw what you were working on. Yes, complete success. Really? Yes. <laughs> stumbling about and going into the village stumbles upon the house of a blind man I know it's cliche but that's what happens Someone there. What? 
Hello. Ah. Are you a visitor? <laughs> oh, a visitor. Oh, thank you so much. My he hello, hello. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh. What a funny way to say hello. Oh, I am Victor. Nice to meet you. You are. Absolutely unforgivable. Yes. Yes, that's it exactly. You see, I... But I, as I was reading your letter, I became frankly bored with its ambiguity. Well, I, <laughs> I'm sorry, they teach us a very, very, you know, scholastic writing style at the seminary. Father! Tell me what he's doing. Tell me what he's working on. I must know. I will tell you. Now. Yes, it all started six or seven months ago. At least that's when I noticed it. Small animals went missing from the town. And soon small animals became bigger animals with pieces missing. <laughs> Turn to Sylvia, Emily, and Count Duce as Dr. Drakenstein arrives. I'm 
laboratory and finds Francis and a priest trying to get in. We'll, we'll see how this works out staging wise. I guess we'll hear them on the other side of the door. all alone when the creature climbs up over the side. Or from behind. Ha 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 ha!